And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest and cr craziest and most batshit ways possible, and I've completely fucked up my own intro. <laughs> I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have two newcomers here in the temple. Coming to us straight from Positive Concept Games and developers of Shrine's Legacy, which we'll be getting into tonight. In the red corner, we have in the red corner we have the te we have we have Alan Gabbard. Hopefully, I got that right. And in the blue c and in the blue corner we have our 16-bit Duke, better known as Joseph Duke. How you two doing tonight? Doing all right. I'm doing good. Yeah, and uh, this is Alan. <laughs> <laughs> um, I usually end up asking this as my dumb question of the my dumb question quota, but um, since I've got since I've got a two since I got a twofer in this case, which one to use the Abbot and which one to use the Costello? Um, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, I feel really stupid. Who are Abbot and Costello again? Or what are they? I, I know, I know it, but I, I, brain is not, brain is on Kickstarter overload. So, you ever hear of who's on first? Okay, yes, those guys. Um, I'm the guy. Um, I'm the guy. I guess asking the question <laughs> initially, like the Abbott and Costello gag, gag is me basically saying which. which which one to use the funny man? Which one's the straight man? Okay. <laughs> uh, I I don't know. <laughs> I still don't know. Yeah. We're both kind of somewhere in between. Yeah. We kind of flow from one to the other. I guess I'm more of the funny man, but it just depends on the moment. Abastello. Right. Yeah, I gotcha. Um. So <clears throat> I'd, I'd like to start at the humble beginning, in a sense. Now. Shrine's legacy is very is very much is very much styled after a lot of a lot of games after the six uh, off of the uh, 16-bit era, but in particular, I believe I'd be fair of me to say, um, Secret of Mana and Illusion of Gaia are the, are the um f are at the forefront in those inspirations. Um, how did you? I'd like you to walk me through your first introductions to this particular style of play, and then um. What made it stick, and the journey to creating this project? Well, uh, initially, like back in high school, uh, Joe wanted to make a game, and he approached me to write a story. So I came up with the concept for the story of Shrine's Legacy, and um, Eventually, we, we built the concept of the game over years of work and also working day jobs and going to school until eventually uh, we focused on it more seriously. And um, we just wanted to make a fantasy RPG, that action RPG, that had two-player co-op because we felt like not enough RPG games in general really do co-op. And we like to play RPGs together, so that's where the idea came from. And we're very inspired by like Illusion of Gaia, Soul Blazer, Terra Enigma. That's the Soul Blazer trilogy, and uh, Link to the Past, and the co-op of Secret of Mana, and I would also say the storytelling of Final Fantasy. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I usually group those four together as like the biggest most obvious influences, but there's other things that, you know, it all came from. There's even, like, Kingdom Hearts in there a little bit. and Super Metroid. Yeah, just other smaller things. Hollow Knight. There's, it's basically like a hodgepodge of all of our favorite things from a whole lot of different games. Mm -hmm. But mostly, mostly, like, uh, Illusion of Gaia combined with like Zelda and Final Fantasy. That's like the core of it. And the rest is like seasoning. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, and what else was there to that question? Sorry, I think we got yeah, focused on the origin story. Um the 
I'd say I'd say the uh, the other part of that is when it comes to that particular st that particular style that si that sixteen dreader approach. Um, what about it? St what about it was um, stuck to you as as this is the direction that you want that you wanted to go? So first first of all, like a lot of the older games, in addition to just having a lot of really interesting uh, just things that happen throughout the games because a lot of newer games seem to play it really safe but in addition to that there's the very obvious thing of just we're we're just two people and we can't really make a big modern looking 3d rpg so going with the older school style just made sense but it's also our childhood so it's very nostalgic for us to be making a game in that style mm-hmm Although, give, given the inspirations that you mentioned, it's cer it certainly sounds like while that while that's certainly a significant muse, you're got you guys aren't trying to limit yourself to, to directly to directly being just that, right? No, yeah, we definitely. Um, gosh, I think the dodging uh, animation because like there isn't a big animation for when you dodge. It was inspired by near automata of all games actually yeah so like the way you dodge in that game they don't really animate too hard they just kind of shift mm -hmm. and i was like we can do that and that's a simpler animation than doing a dodge roll yeah because again we're just i mean we do we do do commissions so we commission some artists and stuff but we don't have the most resources in the world to do that right now so yeah we're no sea of stars like all the all the <laughs> main character sprites and stuff are done by me so and a lot of the other art not all the art is done by me but there is mm -hmm. so no. i'm doing so many things at once it's just you have to make certain like you have to cut edges cut corners every now and then where it's not as important all right go ahead yeah um I will i will note that i appreciate i appreciate that even though even though secret of mana is very clearly an inspiration it's clear it's clear from what i've been seeing in the demo and and some of the footage i've been looking around at that um you guys didn't keep the one the one thing that i would eternally pick on secret <laughs> of mana 4 <laughs> what's that i didn't like the whole st i didn't like the whole stand still and charge and charge your basic <laughs> attack <laughs> thing so oh, I, yeah. I don't really like secret of mana that much and uh, David Vink and Super Derek did a video reviews of our demo recently, and I'm super grateful to them. Shout out to them. Mm -hmm. um, I saw yeah, some, sure. I saw someone in the comments. I think it was David Vink's comments said the devs the devs uh, they like Final Fantasy 13 and they think Secret of Mana blows. I don't have hope for this project. <laughs> <laughs> On David Vink's video, not David Vink himself. No, not right David Vink himself. It's the comments. And um, I don't know how they found that out. It might have been an interview we had a while back where I, I mentioned I actually like Final Fantasy XIII and I oh. don't think Secret of Mana is that good. I do think Second and Setsu 3 or Trials of Mana is a good game. So, um, uh, and as, so much as, as I recall, that didn't have that system. Like, yeah, it, it did it not. <clears throat> you could just attack and it was okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, you don't have to wait. In fact, now that I remember it, yeah, yeah, it didn't because I remember playing a um, I remember playing a fa a fan translation of um Seiken Densetsu three, and it it did it didn't have that at all. Mm. Um, but when it but the the thing is that the, I don't um, I do think I do think that a lot of people gloss over certain aspects with Secret of Mana, and because of the fact that I don't. Um, I don't have the I don't um put my ro put rose colored glasses on. In fact, I smash rose colored glasses. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. yeah it's I the same. For gonna us, call, I'm gonna call things as as they are. And that whole, I mean, that whole thing of that whole thing of having to stand completely still to charge mm -hmm. up your attack in an action game, where stand, yeah. where where um you've got a lot of where you've got a you've got now. I'd say two whole generations of gamers who are ta who are taught in action games standing still is death. <laughs> well, it's yeah. not even just the gameplay. Like I think the story has a lot of problems. Your but... mom is a mana tree. <laughs> or just 
You fall it's, down in a hole. It's just not a very exciting story. Yeah, it's, it does have it does have some things that make up for it all. Like I, I'm not gonna diss on anyone for thinking it's a great game because there are great aspects to it. Yeah, it's yeah. just hard for it's hard for me and Alan to get into it. Yeah, it's uh, and I know it's weird because people get a lot of secret amount of from our. Uh... And the co-op is one of the things in Seer to Mana that is really, really cool. Yeah, and I, you know, I I definitely do want to take influence from the best things about it, as well as, like, Trials of Mana, but mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you know, I got my own preferences. Well, anyway, this probably should have started with the bashing. <laughs> Look, the roasting of Secret of Mana. Look, here in the temple, we hold these truths to be self-evident. That all men are cremated equal. <laughs> like, yeah. Even, all men and games. Yes. <laughs> the thing. The thing is. The thing is, we are. We are equal. Um, we are equal opportunity roasters here, and and <laughs> I find I find that the best way to appreciate what came before is to uh, is to give props to what was good and and roast what 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 was not good. I mean. As much as I lo as much as I love as much as I love Doom, um, I'm still I'm still gonna be roasting Sandy Peterson over an open flame for some of his maps, mostly because they sucked. <laughs> um, and the f and the fact that Slough of Despair still exists because they thought, hey, let's make a map shaped like a hand. <laughs> Good idea. I'll do it now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I mean, I still love. I mean, I still love the. I mean, I've still liked the game, and, I, and to use another example, I like the simplicity of Wolfenstein 3D, but 60 levels of it is way overstaying <laughs> its welcome. And that's yeah, even yeah. before you get into um, the the Spear of Destiny expansion. But I'm, I'm, I only bring that kind of thing up just to show that just liking the classics and and tr is not is not an excuse to put classics above critique. Mm -hmm. Exactly. He will still he will still roast the um he will still roast the water temple over an open flame from Ocarina of Time. Yeah. Even Miyamoto, I think even Miyamoto is has admitted that that was a bad idea. Mm. That's funny. Yeah. Um. Grant granted granted in the DS version it's it's they've in the and the remix sense they've toned they've toned the thing back but. It w but it I, was. I still... heard they did make some changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so that's probably better. It's not. I like. I like to say it. I. I like to say when it came to it, it. Um. Congratulations, Water Temple. You've graduated from complete bullshit to mostly bullshit. <laughs> so you did better, but I still hate you. <laughs> yeah. Um, but... You went from a zero. You got an F to a fifty. You got an F. <laughs> <laughs> But with but getting back getting back onto the swing of things, um, when it it sounds to me that co that, that um co op was one of those things that you guys you guys felt that you needed to, that you needed to do from the get go. Would it would it be fair of me to say that that was one of the early sticking points when you were concepting that it had to be um co op? Yep. Yeah, <laughs> and it's also led to a lot of. Uh... We've had to design a lot of things around the fact that it is co-op. Mm -hmm. For example, like things like jumping on the field, that would be a lot harder to do with an AI partner following you around and having to not get stuck on things and everything. So that would be cool, but we decided not to do that partially because of the co-op. And there's other things like that too. Yeah, like I wish you could jump, but it was just... It's just too technically. There's too many things at once at that point. I don't like the idea of the AI teleporting to you either, just because you're on a higher platform or lower platform. Or like building out routes in every single room in the game so that they can follow you on a like AI, mm -hmm. which is doable, but that's a lot of work. Yeah. Oh yeah. Now, <clears throat> one of the one of the things that I certainly. That I certainly found interesting with the with the setup from what I saw was the gemstone system that you guys went with. Um, mm -hmm. What pro what prompted that idea? Okay, that's um, that is actually 
So when I was a kid, I came up with uh, this story called um, The Sword of Shrine. And I used to tell it to my brother, um, my younger brother, before bedtime. And the the Sword of Shrine, which is the main weapon in the game, mm -hmm. um, the game's not called that because the Sword of Shrine is an awkward thing to say. Um, Spoilers, it used to be called the Sword of Shrine, but we changed it at a certain point because yeah. it just sounds kind of weird yeah um the the idea when i was a kid was he got the sword got infused with different gemstones to create different elements mm -hmm. and the sword could change into different weapons uh, but it was still a sword at its core however uh, that idea didn't make it into the game because that's just over complicating things but yes, uh, from my childhood bedtime stories, the idea of different elements with gemstones has always been there. Mm -hmm. So that's where it came from. It came from a childhood bedtime story All that right. I made up. Now, within within that, from what from what I've from what I've seen, there's going to be you plan to have a variety of gemstones that are going to be some of them to be used for magic, and some of them are more support like effects. Oh. There's a differentiation between them. The gemstones are the elements, and there's eight of them. And the jewels are the support effects, and there's a lot more of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you've played Paper Mario, they're kind of like badges, and if you've played uh, Hollow Knight, they're kind of like charms. G gemstones are your new spells mm -hmm. that you get, and jewels are your equipment to give you new abilities, essentially. Yep. Mm -hmm. And which I think, which so sounds to be a, sounds to be a fair approach because I get the because of the because of the importance of the sword. Um, it I think it'd be fair I think it'd be fair to say that you can't really do the standard equipment setup and that kind of thing. We we actually had that set up a long time ago, but we removed it because. We just wanted to keep things a little bit simpler in terms of like what the player needs to worry about. Mm -hmm. So we figured that like a jewels slash badge system would just make it the game flow a little bit better. So that's what we went with. Yeah. Now you mentioned you mentioned that there are eight that there are eight um eight gemstones when it comes to the when it comes to the elements. Would it be too much of a spoiler for me to ask? Um, what each element can do in combat and out of combat? Um, we can't spoil all of it, also because we're still figuring out a little bit of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, we can spoil a little bit of it. <laughs> like I think I think at this point we can tell you what the elements are at least. What do you think, Alan? Probably because there's only one we haven't actually shown off in some capacity, mm -hmm. and um, that would be the wind um, element. Mm -hmm. It's the only one that hasn't been shown off. And yet. water. Oh yeah, water, right. And Earth we've only shown off to uh a few people. I think. No, no, we had it on Twitter at some point. But uh, it's it's like not it needs to be revised and needs to look cooler. Yeah. There's a couple things we still wanna go back to and improve the appearance on. But um I'll go ahead and let you know what the uh the elements are. Mm -hmm. So there's ice, there's fire. Oh, I guess I can explain them a tiny bit here. Yeah. So there's ice, you can freeze enemies, you can freeze uh, blocks and stuff and use them for puzzles mm -hmm. with ice. There's a, uh, you can even hit enemies into other enemies and deal damage to both of them. There's fire, you can set enemies or obstacles on fire with fire. Uh, make things blow up sometimes. <laughs> like vol There's like volcanoes on the island in the second dungeon. And you can uh, hasten their their expiration <laughs> with fire. Yep. There's light, which uh, light lets you cast a spell on your weapon, essentially. And that will make your weapon cause like you to gain health when you hit an enemy for a short time. Mm -hmm. And then there's... Um, next would be earth. Earth sends like a shockwave along the ground, and it can go pretty far. But it has a smaller area of effect. You can like, or thinking you can like pull things out of the ground with it, but that's not implemented quite yet. 
Um, so like say something's buried underground, you can shoot the shock wave and it'll pull the thing out of the ground. It could be like a platform or it could be like a treasure or something. And then the, then the remaining four elements actually upgrade your previous elements and give them new functionality. Which we haven't really talked about yet. Yeah. We should talk about that in our backer update. Yeah, definitely. We'll talk about that in the backer update soon. So you're hearing it here first, pretty much, <laughs> other than us mentioning it in the Discord. But um, basically, you get, you get the crystal element, which is an upgrade to your ice element, makes it bigger. Um, we're still figuring out what exactly it does on the field, but it will give you new ways to solve puzzles. Mm-hmm. There's the wind, which upgrades your earth elemental, which allows you to shoot it. Like, instead of just going through the ground, it can go through the air. So if you're, like, on a higher-up platform, you can shoot it, and it'll go across the chasm. It can go across the gaps, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Whereas no other spell can do that. Right, and then there's lightning, which can... Uh, it's basically your fire, but you get a little more distance on it, more hits to it, and more effects. Like Crystal, we're still figuring out what exactly those effects will be, but some kind of thing that lightning can do. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last one would be water, which upgrades your light element. And again, we're figuring out what exactly that will do. Yeah, we, what, what, we do have one idea that of what it will do, but I don't want to spoil what it is yet. Yeah, I got, I got gotcha. you. <clears throat> that's the that's the uh, rundown of it. Mm -hmm. Now. When it when it comes to when it comes to now Eve like I know that you had set the thing up for um co for co op but I but is it is there still going to be enough of a bone for those who uh, for those who either either don't want to play don't want to do co op or prefer playing solo? Oh yeah, plenty. And in fact, uh, for those who want like the game to be more challenging, you can play by yourself for sure. Um, co-op probably makes it easier. Yeah, it, it's it's designed with both in mind equally, both single player and co-op. Yeah, co-op definitely does make it a little bit easier. We decided to just roll with that because that's kind of part of the fun of it, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it's definitely fully playable single player. Your ally will be controlled by the AI, and you can just shift between the two characters at will with the button press whenever you want to. You mm -hmm. can. So if you don't want to waste, have them wasting their MP, you can just switch to them and use their spells and then switch back if you want to. Mm. There's lots of ways you can utilize that, and you can still do a lot just in single player without you know, a second player with you. Mm -hmm. And the AI is mostly competent. They, they actually help you fight, even though they're AI. So, so there's not going to be as much of an issue of herding cats. <laughs> oh no no unlike secret of mana because that's something that annoyed me in secret of mana was you'd have your allies behind you they'd get stuck on a wall and then your camera would be locked in place and you can't move forward and you got to go back and then they'll you know they'll start following you again but that would happen like all the time so there's none of that in our game you just if you get too far away from your ally, which doesn't happen too often, mm. they'll just teleport to you. So they'll just fade out of reality and back in. Maybe a little immersion breaking, but it's a whole lot better than wasting your time every five minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, or more. <laughs> now, when, obviously, obviously, when it comes to when it comes to the add-ons that. Uh, that are your that are going to be your support equipment. Oh, um, um, it. I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm not going to ask you to go through all of them. Connect. But uh, I would. But I would like. Oh, hello. Uh, sorry. Um, sorry. Let me plug up the Ethernet. Discord does weird things when I have uh, when I have Wi-Fi set, so I need to plug my Ethernet cord out. Mm. But uh, you can continue. Yeah, what I, what I was going to ask is, um, is when it comes to the when it comes to the when it comes to the equipment end of things, the the non-casting um, jewelry, um, mm -hmm. I'm not 
obviously I'm not going to ask you to go through the whole list because one, that'd be a spoiler, and two, we'd be here all night. Yeah. But I would like you I would like you to go through a sampling of some of some of the effects that they that they can bring and how and how that can work with the rest of the sandbox. So jewels bring a variety of effects. Um, mm -hmm. The first one you can get displays a mini map within the dungeon. Like you have a map that builds itself out in your menu, mm -hmm. but the mini map won't be there unless you have the jewel equipped, um, which I think was inspired by Hollow Knight. I think Hollow Knight does that. Yep. Mm -hmm. And there's other jewels that like. You know, I talked about Kingdom Hearts being an inspiration. One thing, mm -hmm. a couple things actually. There's one jewel that, if you get dealt a critical hit, that does more damage, and then like, let's say you have two HP left and you get hit for three damage, you'll survive the attack. Um, if you have this certain jewel equipped, because it lets you keep one HP from a fatal blow, mm -hmm. which is very inspired by Kingdom Hearts. And also another jewel lets you see the enemy's health bars, which is very Kingdom Hearts as well. And uh, But there's other things like the dash attack you can control. Um, you can like dash attack diagonally with jewels equipped, so it changes your abilities. And, you know, things like that. Just mm -hmm. changes your abilities and um, gives you some things that make exploring easier and et cetera, et cetera. Even a couple that were added pretty recently to the demo for like the Kickstarter demo or like you, when you're in critical health, like when your bar is flashing red to show that you're close to dying, then it will raise your, one of them will raise your attack and magic and the other one will raise your defense and resistance. So mm -hmm. stuff like that. And we're planning to have synergies as far as like some jewels will You'll want to use them with other jewels to make like more powerful effects and stuff. Mm. Almost like making a build, like a character build in my game, like Diablo. But it's something you can do on the fly whenever. Yeah. Any anywhere there's a save point, you can do it. You can change it up. From what I saw, there's a there's a set number of gems that can, there's a set number of slots that both characters have for gems. Is it would it be fair of me to say that much like um, HP and MP maximums. As you progress, you'll be you'll be getting more slots. Yes, for sure. You only start with four of them, but you'll be getting at least double that in the full game. Probably more. Maybe. Well, I don't want to say exactly how many yet, but it'll be between like seven and ten. I think will be the maximum. Mm -hmm. Now. <clears throat> one of the th one of the things that. That you brought that you brought up when it came to bosses was a comparison to Hollow Knight of the whole recognizing their um recognizing their patterns. Um, yes. In the in that regard, are are bo would you say that bosses are single phase or are they multi phase more often than not? Oh, in our game mm -hmm. specifically, yes, yes. Uh, they multi phase normally. Yeah. Um, because. Yeah. I like a good boss fight that surprises you. Yeah, they're basically every main, like, non-mini boss. Like, mini bosses will be one phase most of the time, probably. Maybe some exceptions. But um, the main bosses will be multi-phase. There is kind of an exception in the demo right now, in that uh, the final boss of the demo is basically one phase, although it's a pretty lengthy, like, pattern that he goes through, so it's not really gonna be boring, per se, but... Mm -hmm. And nobody's really complained too much about it, but we're still probably going to go back to that boss and kind of add something to it to make it a little more interesting, add one more phase, basically. Yeah. But in general, there'll be multi-phase boss fights, and the final fights will probably be more than two phases, because that just makes it interesting, in my opinion. I, I gotcha. Now, with it... Within within the um, world that the world that you have, um, I think you I think you had mentioned on an early spot on the kick on the Kickstarter page about about wanting some of the left fieldness and and specifically specifically bringing up um, 
Oh, specifically bringing up in all but name, Ultros from FF6. Yep. So, <laughs> would it be fair of me to say that even though, even though this is clearly a clearly a fantasy game, that there's go that there's going to be some there are going to be some aspects that aren't considered typical when it comes to fa when it comes to fantasy. Um, I, I don't really, do you mean like advanced technology or something like that? I mean, what, be, whether it be that or just, or just, or just, um, just, str just things that might be considered strange in a traditional fantasy approach, but that, but have a just go with it attitude. I'd say, yeah, for sure. Probably. Especially like. Like you, you, there's a. F How far did you get in the demo? Did you meet the three brothers? I don't. Th I don't think I did. Okay, well that that's okay. Basically, there. Uh, basically, there's some characters even in the demo that are uh, a little wild, mm -hmm. and um, a little weird. And those characters are not only going to be in the demo; they're going to be developed in the full game even further. So mm -hmm. yeah, there'll be some. There'll be some surprises in there that'll be pretty, pretty fun. <laughs> I'm not gonna spoil them, though. Um, and... Yeah, there'll be a lot more out of left fieldness yeah. as the game goes on. Not to say that it won't have a serious story behind that, though. Um, but we just don't want it to be boring and overly serious, if that makes sense. Yeah. Also, um, why why did you put in, why did you put a thing on the Kickstarter page about yes you can pet the goat? <laughs> it seems to be an important feature that people want. <laughs> so is that is that a, is that a is that a nod to the can you pet can you pet the dog um, gag that's been around for the last few years? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and also, uh, they actually featured that tweet, so it's pretty cool. They have a Twitter. There's a Twitter called Can You Pet the Dog, and they have like 500,000 followers. So, yeah, I've getting seen a retweet from them is pretty nice. So, yeah, I've seen so that was those. Cool. They, they, they go through every game they can think of that has a dog, <laughs> and the question of whether or not you can pet it. A worthy question, I suppose. And well, for a while, the avatar that they used was the um, dog you see in the UFO ending from from nice. Silent Hill Four. Silent Hill. Oh. I respect that. <laughs> yeah. Now, one one particular avenue of um of game of this gameplay sandbox that is certain that can certainly can mm -hmm. certainly go the wrong way very easily if not if not um if not properly prepared for is the way is the way puzzles go and I'm would it be fair of me to say that. While the puzzles that you guys have have in dungeons are going to be a bit of a challenge, they're not going to be um, hand breaky. We're not going to be dealing with King's Quest level insanity. <laughs> no, it's more like the Legend of Zelda mm -hmm. um, levels of puzzle design. Yeah, we're taking a lot of influence from like a Link to the Past and other similar games like that for puzzles. Yeah, I don't even even like Lufia Two is probably a little too esoteric with its puzzle design. We kind of want we want people to feel smart mm -hmm. for solving the puzzle, but we don't want them to struggle at it for three hours just to find that it was something they they could have done in three seconds, mm -hmm. but it just didn't make sense, yeah. or it was like hiding behind something that the, they couldn't see. Mm -hmm. The term that I often use for that kind of thing is hand breaking. <laughs> um. The polar opposite of handholding, it's when the it's when the solution to an obstacle is something that you'd either need to be a psychic or have, or have already looked up on a walkthrough. I like it. Mm -hmm. Um, like adventure games are are a are a repeat offender when it comes to this kind of thing. That's why I've been making fun of King's Quest for twenty years. <laughs> I had some fun with some of the old King's Quest, but yeah, I didn't know what I was doing most of the time. <laughs> I I eventually fi I eventually figured it out, but some but some, for some for some adventure games the 
it's not that I, it's not that I can't figure out the solution. It's just that it's so it's so obtuse. You, it's it's yeah. like you need to have some sort of galaxy brain kind of mindset in order to in order. But to you already it. know it. You can do it in a second. But if you don't know it, then you just have to happen to know some really random specific thing that you have to do. Yeah, um, a Zelda example of um, hand breaking. Death Mountain in Zelda Two. Which I hope whoever designed that du that dungeon got keel hauled. <laughs> now, yeah, that dungeon's the final dungeon in Zelda Two is absolutely ridiculous. Um, is it? Is it? It now. <clears throat> whenever I bring that up, people always say, "But, but, but the whole the whole map is in Nintendo Power." I didn't have Nintendo Power at the time. <laughs> I was I was in the middle of bum ass nowhere in Newport. And even even and even if even if I did, I shouldn't need I shouldn't need to. <laughs> exactly, yeah. That's just how they designed a lot of old games. Like the first Zelda was the same way. You want to you want to uh, find these hidden caves? Well, bomb every single wall because the, there's no indication of which ones you can actually open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're we're not going to be trying to replicate that mm -hmm. aspect of old games. Yeah, the um, well, the whole re the whole reason Nintendo Hard was even a thing was because of what happened during the um, crash of the eighties. Yeah. So the the mindset was we're gonna make it. We need to make games as ba as batshit hard as possible so that the, so that the mo so that the most um most amount of time is sp is spent on them. <laughs> yeah. It's Especially since Nintendo had this policy where you could only make, I think, I think you could only, I think the, I think third parties could only make not, um, I think either seven or nine games a year. I can't remember the exact number, but it wasn't very large. Oh yeah, there was some, there was some really weird rules Nintendo had back then, mm -hmm. like that. I had forgotten about that, but now that you bring it up, I remember it. Now, with. With that in with that in mind, um, when it comes to when it comes to the when it comes to the um, flow of the game, um, would it are you are you guys are you guys trying to go for a mix of overworld and dungeons, or is it or is it going to be um, dungeons and a um, hub? Definitely overworld and dungeons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a pretty well in the demo. I will say that the dungeons get a little bit more love than the overworld. Yeah, you can't like. There's not as much exploration in the first you part. You can't go off the beaten path mm -hmm. too far in the overworld. Um, in the there are there are like you know there are twists and turns you can take, but they're for like extra stuff, not for entirely branching paths in the story. You'll be able to explore the overworld more freely. I'm mm -hmm. um, in the full game, but. Yeah, basically, after the end of the demo is when the game opens up more and you have more options and there's more overworld to explore and stuff, mm -hmm. essentially. And with that, no, with that, with that kind of thing in mind, um, one other one other aspect I was curious about is the th is the theme of loss that you guys had uh, mentioned on the on the Kickstarter. Um, what was the prompt to go in that particular direction for the story? Well, when I initially wrote the first draft of the script, there was a lot of problems with the story uh, itself and the pacing. and the... There wasn't really a theme tying it all together because I didn't really understand theming when I wrote the first draft of the script. Mm -hmm. And then... Later, when I realized, oh yeah, the story needs a theme. Well, what's the theme of this game's story? Uh, you know, I just asked myself, and I came to the conclusion that loss and how people cope with it is the main theme of the game. And you see that a little bit in the demo itself. So, But I, I really do want to finish the full game so that people can see more of what I have 
written because I think it's uh, explored a lot more deeply um, in the full story. It's it's kind of like Final Fantasy VII. I think there's a strong theme of loss in Final Fantasy VII. Um, loss of identity is a big theme in Final Fantasy VII as well. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, our game isn't as you know post-apocalyptic whatever Final Fantasy VII's setting is, but... I, consi I consider Seven to be Magipunk. Um, yeah. It's <laughs> but way too it's... civilized to be a post-apocalypse. Yeah. It's theme of... That makes uh, sense. Yeah, yeah, I mean, definitely. It, it's theme of loss and loss of identity. And mm -hmm. It's very prevalent throughout the entire game. And... Uh, Trains Legacy is kind of similar in that regard and how characters deal with loss. So, yeah, um, that's pretty much how I came up with that is because I had to ask myself, what is the theme of this story? And then I had to rewrite the entire script with that theme in mind. Mm -hmm. And it made the script a lot tighter and the story's just better now. Yeah, once, once we figured that out, then uh, things started coming together a lot more and things got a lot more interesting. Before we figured that out, like he said, there, like he said, there were a lot of problems, but um, mm -hmm. that really helped bring it all together. And like the stuff that's not in the demo yet, whenever I, because I helped revise the script, but I didn't write it, mm -hmm. so I I call myself halfway biased, but um, <laughs> when reading it, but whenever I was reading it, I I definitely like I was feeling it. Let me put it that way. So I can't wait to actually put it, you know, in game form in its entirety. Mm -hmm. But um, basically, we figured out, like, theming whenever we played Undertale, really, because that game has such a strong sense of theme. Mm -hmm. And um, we kind of realized at that point, wait, what's our theme? <laughs> Why don't we have an answer to that question? <laughs> so that was a big turning point for our game, I think. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. Now, with the, with that in mind, what are you guys shooting for as far as, um, as far as how, as far as the hour count when it comes to the main story? Which I, I realize that's a, um, that's a bit of a tricky question t to answer. Yeah, we can only estimate it right now, but my estimation is, like, if you take your time with it and you do you know, a decent amount of optional content, like 15 to 20 hours. But if you rush through it, you could definitely beat it a lot faster than that. But I think you'll get the most out of it whenever you take your time with it, mm -hmm. especially like towards the ending parts of the game. I'm, gu I'm guessing you I'm guessing you guys are following an axe structure in that regard. Uh, I'll let Alan answer this one. For the story? Mm -hmm. Or? Yeah. Oh yeah, there's a there's definitely like a three act structure to the game story. Mm -hmm. uh, now, if you, in some in in some old classics, there's been there's been the prospect of of op of optional um, bosses. You know, obviously, obviously, the big example of this is the what is the weapon series, um, in various forms in Final Fantasy, but there's been others. Um, Tri Ace's mm -hmm. games being the biggest offender when it comes to the when it comes to the optional bosses, but ha is that something that you guys have considered down the road of ju of just out of the way bosses that are there that are there primar primarily to be an even harder challenge? Definitely. Yeah, they're definitely being uh, considered and thought of. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, yeah, it's it's one of those things that it. I'm not. I obviously wouldn't ex wouldn't expect a uh, wouldn't expect a outline of that now. It's because that would probably be a bit spoilery. But it is good. It is good. Yeah. It's being considered. Um, I ho I hope they're not as ex I hope they're not as extreme as some of as some of the ones I've seen in Star Ocean over the years. <laughs> I'll say don't expect like a bajillion optional bosses, but do expect more than a couple. When it comes when it comes to when it comes to that, it's the num the number is the number isn't the issue, but more of um more of how more of how far on how far on the extreme they end up going. 
the reason I most of them Shrew. won't be like most of them won't be like pedal to the metal one thousand percent difficulty bosses. Yeah, the the reason why I bring up um, why I keep picking on Triace's games in that regard is because they've had no some notorious um, entries. Um, I don't remember for Eternal Son. That's Eternal Sonata's uh, company, right? Eternal Sonata. Oh. Um, Star, o Star Ocean, Radiant Fantasia. Did they do Vector Profile too? Yes. They did. Sparrow Sonata is a good game that nobody remembers. I remember. <laughs> good. It's a good game. It really is, good. It is. It's, especially since I can use that to lure, to lure in my classical music snobs to be, to be converted <laughs> into gamers. There you go. It's such a weird idea to like let's make a japanese rpg about frederick chopin <laughs> on his deathbed when you it's can, so when... strange that you gotta you gotta get out of yeah. um and the cutscenes. some of the cutscenes are too long in my opinion but it's not a perfect game but man that combat is so cool though i would i would have said i would have said that that's a that that's a strange idea but the reason i can't is twofold one I've seen how I've seen how bonkers RPGs could RPGs got could get on both sides of the pond. Um, mm -hmm. Like I've, I've seen I've seen a, I've seen a whole lot of PC snobs over the years talk about how weird Japanese RPGs are, and I'm like, bitch, you play wizardry. Mm -hmm. Where where if where a fantasy setting all of us all of a sudden goes into aliens and de and de and demons and shit. Nice. <laughs> yeah. I, you cool. play wiz you play wizardry and you play might and magic. Don't don't throw stones in that glass house. <laughs> <laughs> um but What about fireball? Huh? <laughs> what about throwing fireballs in the glass house? Yeah, that yeah, that too. The <laughs> the point the <laughs> point is a lot a lot of people who got their who who got their who got their start on um on say PC style RPGs don't have a whole lot of room to talk about weirdness, especially when Planescape exists. Which <laughs> I haven't really played Planescape. I think I might have played one of them, but it was for such a short time I didn't get the full experience of Planescape it. Planescape was only one game. Okay. But the the point is the point is, is that we, is that weirdness is not ex, is not exclusive to one side of one side of the ocean, or not. Um. Oh, I think I was thinking of a D and D game. Well, Plain, um, Planescape was originally a campaign setting for a D and D that would later get adapted into um, video game form with Planescape Torment. So you're not far okay. off. Um, it's actually one of the actually one of the better campaign settings, although I'm a little bit biased towards Dark Sun. But when it when it comes to when it comes to um when it comes when it comes to that kind of that kind of that kind of weirdness of the idea of taking taking Sho taking Chopin's dream and tur and turning that into a game. Uh, there's a Japanese band that there's a Japanese band that I follow that that did an entire album based on Mozart's Requiem. You know, the, <laughs> the piece the piece that he never finished. Nice. Um, yeah. And of course, when it comes to when it comes to mythological nods in Final Fantasy, if I were to list off, if I were to list off some of those, I'd be here all week. Oh. But the I'm and it's, and that, that's not even getting into some of the um, some of the hodgepodge elements that have been seen in fa in fantasy anime for the last thirty years. So yeah, sometimes sometimes the hodgepodge stuff is weird and not in and like just a why is this a thing kind of way, and sometimes it's weird and a this is cool kind of way. Um, I look at that as as kind of a as kind of a cultural reflection thing because if you if you look at say modern if you look at say modern day Shintoism, it isn't it isn't the pure animism type Shintoism that it may have been originally. It's adapted into this hodgepodge of elements between its original form, aspects of aspects of Buddhism, aspects of Confucianism, and aspects of Taoism. Um, 
and you see oh, that, that similar sense. kind of mixing in a lot in a lot of uh, media. And that happens all the time too. Just things kind of as they're exposed to each other, just borrowing elements from each other over time. Yeah. And the and that's all. That's that's also what that's also why I la why I laugh when people um when people talk about say older Final Fantasies being more fantasy and I'm I'm like there was an airship in the first game. What are you talking about? Well, yeah, um, I yeah I know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I I think um, when people say that they just mean more like more of the medieval aspects come through. Um, like classical fantasy, I guess. I, I um, yeah. it's it's one it's one of the it's one of those things where I think the argument is based is based on is based on feel rather than rather than reality, or or on yeah. the on the fa on this fantasy idea idea, um, ignoring the fact that inspiration is a continuum. Like you got you guys have you guys have mentioned. A hodgepodge of old and new games that served as inspiration for how, for how you're going to be going about um, Shrine's legacy. Yeah. yeah, and that's that's kind of the, that's kind of the way inspiration um, really works. Mm-hmm. Um, but with but with all the, with all that in mind, um, what would you say were some of the big um, the big takeaways? that you got with regarding the feedback of the demo. So we actually released the demo originally about, was it about a year ago? October 2nd, 2020. Yeah. So that's when we released the demo originally, which it was not the same demo. Mm -hmm. It was version 1.0 of the demo. <laughs> so it was a lot messier. Yep. And a lot. I mean, it was everything was there. Like the beginning and the end still happened at the same points in the demo, but everything was just less completed, and the graphics, especially, were a lot less there. There was less, uh, less jewels, less balance, mm -hmm. less juice added to like things. But even that one, we did get pretty good feedback on. But a lot of that feedback is what led to. The current version over time because mm -hmm. we updated it over time until we got to the kickstarter which is the most recent version yeah and i don't really think we'll be doing any more major updates we might go back and do some artistic facelifts if we have time yeah but it won't probably won't be implemented into this particular demo we'll probably make a new if we do update this demo it'll be to have a demo for people to play on release of the game mm -hmm. or we might just make a new demo we'll still figure that out later but yeah maybe make a demo that's shorter and just starts at the first dungeon yeah or something like that maybe or it's... or maybe we'll revise it and make that the demo but we'll see yeah because the demo is pretty much the beginning of the game to a certain point and it works so... for dragon quest 11 i suppose some some people don't don't like that though true <laughs> they a lot of people haven't really complained too much, but yeah, we got lots of feedback. We even did some private testing before we released the first version of the demo, mm -hmm. and we had some really cool people help us with that. Yeah. So shout outs to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, that helped us with the version get version 1.0 to be cool. And then what everyone told us after that, and just stuff that we also just knew needed to be done. We just kept you know, hammering on it until it got better and better. And there's still some things that'd be nice to improve for the full game, but it's pretty, it's pretty close at this point. Mm -hmm. It's pretty close to the final product for the most part. Hey. But yeah, to answer your question, the feedback was very, the feedback we got over time was very helpful. Yeah. Huge. Now, I will cert I will certainly be keeping a close eye on how on how it develops, on with and with all that in mind, I would like to sincerely thank both of you for taking the time out of your schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness at play here. No problem. And yeah, 
Anytime you guys see fit to return to my hallowed halls, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty <laughs> more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then... On behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody. <laughs>